Hello and welcome. It's 10 a.m. on Friday, the 16th of January. You're tuned into our mid morning newscast here on Ali Lang TV. Thanks ever so much for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Let's take a look at what's making the headlines. Meeting Korean lawmakers in Tokyo, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe expresses hope for stronger ties with Korea and a possible summit with President Park and Hae this year. At least two people with suspected links to radical Islamic groups have been killed in a counter-terrorism raid in Belgium. Authorities say it was a preemptive strike with a terror attack hours away. Plus, Korea will enforce a 36-hour lockdown over the weekend on poultry and livestock farms across the country to curb the spread of foot and mouth disease and bird flu. Our top story this morning, though, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has reiterated his hopes to hold a summit with Korean President Park and Hae. Meeting with Korean lawmakers in Tokyo on Thursday, Abe also promised to uphold a historic apology to the victims of Japan's wartime sexual slavery, saying the suffering they have gone through is heartbreaking. Hwang Sang-hee reports. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says he will uphold Tokyo's landmark apology to the victims of its wartime sexual enslavement issued in 1993. In a meeting with a South Korean parliamentary delegation on Thursday, Abe said he does not deny the Kono statement and added the so-called comfort women issue is heartbreaking. The Japanese leader said it's regrettable that the issue has been turned into a political dispute between Seoul and Tokyo, but did not lay out a concrete solution. President Park Geun-hye had reiterated that Japan's sincere apology for its wartime atrocities was one of the preconditions for her first summit with Abe. The Japanese leader said he is always open to talks and expressed hopes to improve ties with Korea this year, which marks the 50th anniversary of diplomatic ties. Sa chang wan the ruling Senuri Party Supreme Council member who is leading the delegation, told Abe that President Park hopes that this year will bring a new start for the two neighbors. Bilateral ties between South Korea and Japan are at a historic low mainly due to Abe's repeated denial of Tokyo's historical wrongdoings. Nine South Korean lawmakers are currently on a three-day visit to Tokyo, seeking a breakthrough. Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party General Council Chairman Toshihiro Nikai is expected to lead a 1,000-member delegation to South Korea next month. The question now is whether the parliamentary diplomacy will be enough to break the ice between the two neighbors. Hwang sang Arirang News. The Korean Red Cross is going to push to hold regular reunions for families separated by the Korean War under a plan called Action 110. Drawn up to mark its 110th anniversary, the organization will seek North Korea's cooperation to locate the surviving relatives of some 68,000 South Korean families. In addition to that, it will propose launching a letter exchange program for them and offer more humanitarian aid to North Korea. The last round of these highly emotional reunions was held all the way back last February. A top North Korean envoy says joint drills this week by South Korea and the United States are an open challenge to his country's call for ease tensions on the Korean peninsula. Speaking at a news conference in Geneva on Thursday, So Se Pyong, who is North Korea's ambassador to the United Nations in that Swiss city, also said the standoff with Seoul and Washington could lead to, in his words, a second Korean war. Last weekend, North Korea said it would suspend nuclear testing if the U.S. cancelled its joint military exercises with South Korea. But the U.S. said Pyongyang's offer was a false choice and an implicit threat. Now, back here in South Korea, and with the devastating outbreak of bird flu in 2011 fresh in everyone's minds, the Korean government has announced preemptive measures to try and nip this latest outbreak in the bud at the earliest possible moment. There is going to be a day and a half long complete lockdown of all poultry farms 
workers and vehicles from early Saturday morning. Shin Se-min reports. The movement of birds, farm workers and vehicles at tens of thousands of farms across the entire nation will come to a complete standstill for 36 hours from the early hours of Saturday morning. This is a first ever nationwide lockdown on the transportation of poultry as the government tries to prevent the spread of bird flu. Korea's Agriculture Ministry says the movement ban will remain in effect from 6 a.m. on Saturday until 6 p.m. on Sunday. Some cattle farms are also on lockdown to prevent the spread of foot and mouth disease. That 36-hour window will be used to disinfect farms, buildings and vehicles used to transport animals. These measures will hopefully suppress the spread of the bird flu, as cases have been popping up in different parts of the country. This marks Korea's third large-scale attempt to decontaminate poultry farms and facilities since the first case of bird flu in this outbreak was confirmed last July. Also, for the first time, the government will penalize farmers who don't abide by the measures. The maximum penalty has been set at more than 9,000 U.S. dollars or possibly even a few months in prison. While there is understandable concern, the Agriculture Ministry notes that this is not considered a major bird flu outbreak yet and the lockdown is just precautionary measure. The bird flu is thought to come into Korea from migratory birds that come to the country during the winter months. There have been cases of bird flu dotted around the country with confirmed cases found in Korea's southwestern Cholanamdo province, the southern city of Busan and the central Gyeonggi-do province. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Well, we are for following the anti-terror raid in Belgium that authorities say thwarted a major and imminent attack. We are going to connect to Eunice Kim at the News Centre for the latest on this story, which is continuing to develop. Uh, Eunice, the operation quickly turned deadly and from what we know thus far, two suspects have been killed and a third arrested. Yeah, that is the latest figures we have, Mark. Now, that raid in the eastern town of Vivier was just one of several anti-terror raids Thursday. And in fact, uh, police say that some of the operations are ongoing as the country folds into the early hours on Friday. Authorities say they are part of a weeks-long investigation that was tracking an operational cell made up of people who had recently returned from Syria. The investigation was able to establish that this group was about to commit terrorist attacks on a grand scale in Belgium and imminently. Now that threat was an attack on police buildings in Belgium within days or even hours. The spokesman said at this point they are not making a connection to the Paris terror attacks. He said their investigation had started before the January 7th slaughter at Charlie Hebdo. But reports say authorities did receive tips after that siege that compelled them to move. Now a fierce gun battle had ensued when special forces closed in on the suspect on the upper level of an apparent residential building. You can hear those gunshots there. The officials said the well-armed suspects immediately opened fire, but that no police or bystanders were uh, injured rather in the minutes-long confrontation. Well, very fortunate that no one was killed or uh, any innocent people were killed or injured. And the pieces of this jigsaw could be starting to come together. We know that several countries are taking part in the Paris uh, terror probe. What's the Belgian connection? Well, earlier in the day, Belgian officials had said that they were probing one man for links to Ahmed Koulibaly. Now, that is the suspect gunman in the Paris kosher supermarket attack. And this man was arrested for illegal weapons trade. And as investigations continue on suspicions that he maybe had sold Koulibaly weapons, the suspect only simply claimed that he had wanted to buy a car from the wife of Koulibaly. Uh, now, Belgium is 
is a country that has seen a noticeable rise in radical Islamism. An estimated 300 Belgians are believed to have gone to Syria to fight. That is a bigger proportion of foreign fighters than any other Western nation. And of course, the concern here is that those fighters could be returning to the country to strike terror back at home. Yeah, and that's the concern across a great many European countries with so many European nationals going over there to Syria to fight for the Islamic State. Mm -hmm. And just across the border from Belgium, France is being pummeled yet again, this time uh, in cyberspace. As an authority there says the country has come under thousands upon thousands of cyber attacks since last week. Yeah, that's right. Some 19,000 of them. The French military's head of cyber defense said it was absolutely unprecedented, and most were said to be minor denial of service attacks with no major damage reported. He said the strikes targeted government and military sites as well as private businesses, and that some were carried out by well known Islamic hacker groups such as the Middle East Cyber Army and Cyber Caliphate. Now, this as a flurry of emotions ran uh, this uh, yesterday as the country buried four of the 12 people killed in the satirist magazine attack. A policeman, columnist and two cartoonists were put to rest Thursday, including Bernard Verhoek, known as Tignus, whose coffin was covered in cartoons. What else, Mark? What else indeed? Well, thank you very much, Eunice, and we'll see you back again at noon. See you then. Get connected to Korea and the world. Join us every weekday for the latest developments out of Korea, Asia, and beyond. On air, on your mobile, and online, we lead the way every day. Arirang News. To try and resolve the crisis in Ukraine, the European Union also offers 15 billion. Now back here in Korea and some uh, economic news now. The Korean government is going to inject a staggering 100 trillion won, that's roughly 92 billion US dollars, into creating some new economic growth engines this year. Our Lee ji has more on where the funds are going to be channeled. A total of $166 billion will be poured into establishing a so-called vibrant creative economy this year. More than half of those funds, $92 billion to be exact, will be used to foster innovative startups and small and mid-sized firms. To make sure that bright ideas don't go to waste, the money will support the startups from beginning to end by offering financial tips and funds. Securities firms specializing in mergers and acquisitions between small and medium-sized businesses and venture companies will be developed, and startups that are deemed to have strong solvency will be exempt from joint liability payments. By region, a creative economy valley with a focus on boosting the gaming industry will be established at Pangyo Techno Valley on the outskirts of Seoul. Additional infrastructure will be built to attract more information and communications technology-oriented businesses and talent. In Seoul, what's being called a high-tech startup campus will be set up on Tehran Street, one of the capital's busiest business districts. Some 160 angel investment groups and startup teams will settle into the 10,000-square-meter campus by 2017. They will each be given up to $920 million over three years to use for research and development. The government also says it will put a heavy emphasis on getting a share of the global biotechnology market, as well as the climate and energy sectors. This, the government says, will be done by helping some 2,400 domestic-focused firms transform themselves into export-oriented companies. Lee ji Arirang News. Now, on Thursday, the central bank here in Korea cut its growth outlook for the Korean economy this year by about half a percentage point to 3.4 percent. But the government is a tad more optimistic than that and is sticking to its original target, which is higher than the BOK's new forecast. Speaking to businessmen in Korea's southern port city of Busan on Thursday, Finance Minister Che kyung hwan said his ministry's growth target of 3.8 percent is achievable given the signs of recovery in domestic consumption. The minister said domestic consumption will keep climbing as the government realizes efforts to boost the country's overall income. Last month, the ministry cut its growth estimate for this year 
by 0.2 of a percentage point to 3.8 percent and it what it said then was that it uh, it was due to lower than expected consumption and business investments Korea Samsung Electronics has launched a new smartphone in India that runs on the company's own operating system. The Z1 is the company's first Tizen-powered handset, marking a symbolic departure from its reliance on Google's Android platform. The low-end model you are looking at there is equipped with a 4-inch screen and will cost a very reasonable 90 US dollars or so. Meanwhile, local rival tech firm LG Electronics is set to release its latest flagship G Flex 2 smartphone in Korea at the end of this month. This device won high praise for its high end specs and innovative flexible display at this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Google says it expects people will be using its self-driving cars on public roads within five years. The company has already started talks with a number of automakers. And Korea's LG Electronics is also uh, going to play a key role, our Kim Minji reports. Self-driving cars are not science fiction. They're real and coming soon. Google says that autonomous cars should be on public roads within the next five years, although they would still be test vehicles. Speaking at a conference in Detroit, Chris Urmson, the director of Google's self-driving car project, underscored safety and said the cars would be monitored to see how they interact with other vehicles and pedestrians. He wants to reach the stage where his test team no longer pilots the cars. In a recent interview with Reuters, Ermsen said Google is teaming up with auto suppliers to speed up the process. So yeah, we, we've uh, been talking with the uh, automotive community for the last few years. Uh, you know, we are really excited about the technology. Um, we are excited to push it forward for all the benefits and, and safety and convenience and just kind of making the world a better place. Korea's LG Electronics, for one, will supply battery packs for the high-tech vehicles. Ermsen says that autonomous cars will bring a breakthrough to transportation, not only a game-changer for regular drivers, but also for the disabled or elderly. Kim min Arirang News. The United States and Cuba will take a huge step towards normalizing their relations on this Friday as Washington is going to substantially ease travel and financial restrictions on the Caribbean nation. This means many more Americans will be able to travel to Cuba without a license and Americans, mostly Cubans living in the United States, will no longer be restricted in the amount of money they wire to or spend on the island. Americans will also be able to use their credit and debit cards while they are in Cuba. The move is the first tangible step towards rebuilding diplomatic ties between the two countries that had been almost completely severed since 1961. The changes, however, do not lift the U.S. embargo on Cuba, which remains in full effect. Now, Kangnam style star size song hangover was the most viewed k-pop video in the united states last year according to billboard magazine the single grabbed the number one spot with more than 170 million views on youtube it marks the third straight year that Sai has topped the list following of course kangnam style the most watched video ever on youtube and the following year by his uh, follow-up song gentleman hangover the video you're watching now uh, was released in June and features that man there, American hip-hop legend Snoop Dogg, and pokes a lot of fun at Korea's drinking culture.
And TGI Friday, everyone, as we kick things off with our 2015 Asian Cup coverage as the Korean national football team is set for a big match against the host nation Australia tomorrow in their final group stage match. Now, win or lose, the Tegok Warriors will advance to the next round, but a big match nonetheless as it'll be a test for things to come in the later rounds. Now, despite being ranked 100th in the world, the Australian side has been the hottest team in the tournament, scoring eight goals so far while giving up just one. And with Korea struggling to score in the tournament, the return of Son Heung-min and Kuja Char should improve their offense as the two nations fight for a first-place finish in Group A. Now, the Korean national football team might not be the highest-ranked Asian team, but Korea does have the highest-ranked Asian football club in the world. Now, with the International Federation of Football History and Statistics ranking the top football clubs in the world, Kaylee Classics FC Seoul was ranked the highest amongst the Asian football clubs as they received 147 points, good for 64th in the world. The Korean side was ranked ahead of Saudi Arabia's Al Halal, who was ranked 65th, with Spain's Real Madrid getting the nod as the top football club in the world with 381 points. Now, some of the biggest names in Major League Baseball have visited Korea last year. Pitchers like Mariano Rivera and Hall of Famer Randy Johnson. And now on Saturday, the 2014 Saves leader will arrive in Korea for a tour. Now, nicknamed Honey Badger for his small size but fierce personality on the mound, Fernando Rodney will arrive in Incheon International Airport on Saturday and begin his tour. Will he visit the South Korean Little League World Series team, followed by a visit to Sungshim School to hold a clinic for the hearing impaired baseball players in the school. A two time All Star led the American League in saves last year with 48 saves. Now, speaking of major leaguers, with Kang Jong Ho becoming the latest Korean to head over to the majors, there's been a focus on which school produces the most number of major leaguers here in Korea. And it seems like Hwangju Chair High School produced the most. That including the newest member of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Kang Jong Ho. Four players have come out of Hwangju Chair High School and stepped onto the major league field. The three other players being Sa Jae Young, Big Choi Che Hee Sup, and two time World Series champion Kim Byung Hyun. And according to BaseballReference.com, only 605 schools in the world have produced four or more major leaguers. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. Good morning. It's mild but gloomy and dusty morning we are having and it's not going to be as warm as yesterday. Uh, the high in Seoul will be 4 to 5 degrees lower than yesterday and the rest of the regions should also notice cooler air coming in. And as we can see, lots of clouds are covering up the peninsula, uh, dropping a rain to some of the upper provinces including here in Seoul and over in Incheon and it's ex expected to last till noon before spring to other parts, but again, it should be a very light one. With that in mind, let's take a closer look at the readings for today. Now, the afternoon high in Seoul will climb up to 4, while Daegu and Gwangju will top out at 8 and 6, and Busan will be a bit milder today, topping out at 11 later in the day. Now, as for the other regions, Jeju Island and Daejeon should rise to 10 and 4, respectively, and Tokdo will peak at 7 this afternoon. Now, today's rain will pull down the numbers to the seasonal averages. The low in Seoul tomorrow morning uh, will kick off at minus 5, but it should get mild again on Sunday. That's all for Korea, and here's the international weather for viewers around the world.
Well, that's all we have for now. Plenty more stories online and we'll be back again at noon Korea time with our next newscast. Until then, goodbye.